Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get online using a PS3 on 3.55 custom firmware. I know you guys have been asking for this guide for a couple of days now, but I put it off, and the reason why I put it off is because the arrays that came out at first were really convoluted and long, and it was going to be really tough even though I'm pretty good at making tutorials, I know I'm good at what I do, but it's going to be tough for you guys to follow. I know that it was going to be so. I knew that this was going to happen, and thank God that it did, but a really awesome developer has put all these tools that you needed on a, on a computer, and sometimes in some of the guides it was like two computers, and now all these tools are in one easy-to-use program that's going to work on Windows. You just need one computer, and then you're good to go. So basically, this works on any custom firmware. Today, I'm going to be using Kimiwa's custom firmware just to show you guys how this works in my video. Everything that you need is going to be in a link below on the video that you can just download, as well as a written guide on my website is down there too, so you guys can just click that link, check it out. So basically, how this works is your PlayStation is going to be communicating with your computer and your PlayStation is going to think that it's talking to the PlayStation network before it logs in. So your PlayStation is going to be like, oh, do I need a firmware update? And your computer is going to be like, no, 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 you don't need a firmware update. You're crazy. There's no firmware. And the PlayStation is going to be like, oh, okay. And it'll let you on the PlayStation network and that's it. So it sounds simple. Um, it's really not. There's quite a few things going on. You're spoofing a certificate. Uh, so it thinks that it's talking to PlayStation when it's really talking to your computer. There's a lot going on, but this guide is going to make it really simple for you guys. Just uh, let's go ahead and head over to my computer and I'll show you how to get started. Okay, now basically all you need for this is just a USB flash drive and then you need to download the zipped up file that I have in the link below. So go ahead and pop in your USB flash drive. And then you should have already downloaded the package that I have for you down below. It's psn 3.55.rir and that .rir, you are gonna need something called WinRAR to open that up. I know a lot of you guys have had pr troubles with WinRAR before. Um, I'll put a link below to the program that you need. But basically, once you open it up, it should the icon for it should look just like this. It'll be like a little stack of books belted together. So just go ahead and double click on it, it's gonna open it up. And you should see a window similar to this. And then just go ahead and click the gold extract to button here. And I'm just gonna ex extract it straight out to my desktop. So you just click okay, let it extract. It only takes a second. And then once you extract it, you should see it out on your desktop here. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and open that folder up, and then you'll see that we have some files in here. We've got Black Op, Black Box uh, FTP server. We've got the uh, Dev Blind package, which will allow us to read and write to our Flash. Uh, don't worry, I'll get into that in just a minute. We have our certificate file that we're going to need to put on the PlayStation, and then we have our uh, PSN package right here, which basically when we open this up, um, it's going to listen for your PlayStation to connect to the computer, and when it does, it's basically just going to tell your PlayStation that you are on 3.56, even though you're only on 3.55, so it'll let you get online. Okay, so basically all we need to do here is uh, first go ahead and open up your USB flash drive. All right, there it is. I don't have anything on my flash drive right now. And we just need to put a couple of things on there right now. We need to put on our black box FTP server. So go ahead and open up the black box FTP folder. And inside you're going to see FTP server.pkg. Just go ahead and drag that right over to your flash drive. And then go ahead and click back here. Next we need our DEB blind. And depending on which custom firmware you're using, um, like a GeoHot custom firmware, you're going to need this package right here. And for any other custom firmware like uh, Wanacoco or uh, Kamiwa, you're just going to go ahead and use this package right here. Go ahead and drag that over to your flash drive. These don't need to go in any folder or anything, just right on the root directory, the main directory of your flash drive. So now that we're done putting everything on the flash drive, we need to go over to our PlayStation and install these packages. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that you have those files put on your flash drive and you're over at your PS3, uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and show you that I can't log into the PSN right now. It's going to tell me that I need to do a software update. All right, and no, I don't want to do the update because I'm not stupid. And then uh, I'll go ahead and show you my software version too. So we'll go to system settings and down to system information. And you can see that I'm on 3.55. Now, next thing we need to do is go ahead and pop in your USB flash drive that you just put the files onto. And then let's go over to install package files. There it is. And you're gonna see two things here. You're gonna see the dev underscore blind package and you're going to see the FTP server package. So let's go ahead and install the dev underscore blind package first. So go ahead and highlight it and press X. And then it'll install. Once it's done, it, it'll say install complete. Just go ahead and press circle. And then go back to install package files. And now we're going to go ahead and install the uh, FTP server if you don't already have one on your PlayStation. So just go ahead and press X to install that. When it's completed, press circle. And then you should see both of them down there. We're using black box FTP. And then there's the dev underscore blind, which is going to enable us read and write access to our flash memory on the PlayStation. And like I said, you need to be really careful with this because you can really jack up your PlayStation in here. So first, let's go and open this up. Go and open up the dev underscore blind. 
package file. And why we're doing this is because we need to move our certificate over into the flash memory on the PlayStation. So first of all, you're going to get this screen right here. Go ahead and press circle. And then it's going to say mount writable dev flash to dev blind. We'll say yes. And it says that it successfully mounted it. So now we can write and read to our flash on the PlayStation. Go ahead and press circle and it's going to exit back out to your uh, XMB, your main menu there. And once you're back out at the main menu, the next thing that you want to go ahead and do is install... Oh, I'm sorry, not install. You want to go ahead and open the FTP server. Alright, once Blackbox FTP server opens up, you're going to see right here, it's going to see IP. This is going to say uh, your IP address for your PlayStation right there. That's mine. Yours isn't going to be the same. You need to take note of whatever yours is and then head on over to the computer with me and I'm going to show you how to transfer the certificate file over. Okay, now that we can read and ride to the flash on the PlayStation and you also have your black box FTP server running, it should be showing you an IP address now. So what we're going to do with that IP address now is we're going to open up FileZilla FTP client. You can use any FTP client if you want to, but I use FileZilla. I'll give you guys a link below to download that if you'd like it. And let's go ahead and get it opened up here. And I'm going to go ahead and connect to my PlayStation. So in the host box, I'm going to put in my PlayStation's IP address. Yours is probably different. It'll tell you right on the screen, though. That's a good thing about black box FTP server. Username and password we leave blank, and you just click on Quick Connect. All right, once it's connected, you should see uh, oper uh, Opening Connection, Transfer Complete up there. And you should see a list of folders here. That's how you know that you're connected to the PlayStation. Now, the directory that we need to navigate to doesn't show up here in the list, so we have to type it in. It's not a really big deal. Just go ahead and go up here to the remote site, and that's a text box. You can see that. So you just go ahead and leave that forward slash there, and we're going to go ahead and type this in, and I'll put this down below too so you guys can read it or copy and paste it if you want to. It's just D-E-B underscore blind, B-L-I-N-D, and then just go ahead and press enter, and then it's going to bring up that directory here. Now you can see everything here. There's just a few folders. We want the data folder, so go ahead and double click on that, and now we want the cert folder. This is where your certificates are stored on your PlayStation. Go ahead and double click there. And by the way, just be really careful when you guys are in here. Don't delete anything. Don't rename anything because this is the flash on your PlayStation. And if you mess this up, there is a very good possibility that you could break your PlayStation. Just be really careful and only do what I tell you to do in here. Okay, so now that we have our certificates up, go ahead and scroll all the way down until you see CA24.CER. That's the certificate that we're interested in. Now, it would be really wise of you to go ahead and make a backup copy of this certificate just in case something goes wrong since this is your original and we're putting a modified one on the PlayStation. All you need to do to do that is just go ahead and click and drag it out to your desktop and then it's going to go ahead and transfer over. Once you've done that, it's okay. We can override it. So now that we're ready to go ahead and put our modified certificate on the PlayStation, go ahead and open up your uh, PSN3 underscore 55 folder again. And this time we want that CA24.CER file again. So just go ahead and click and drag that right over to FileZilla. Then it's going to ask you if you want to override it. Just click OK. And then it just takes a couple of seconds to transfer. And now we're done with FileZilla. You can go ahead and click on the X and close out of there. All right, now that you've got your certificate file transferred over, go ahead and come back over to your PlayStation and go ahead and press X on your controller. If your screen's black, that's okay. It just, it just saves your screen. It's basically like a screensaver that this has built into us. So just go ahead and press X on your controller and it'll light up the screen and then you might need to press X again and it's going to exit out of the FTP server and then you'll be back out at your XMB. All right, now that we're out at the XMB, we're pretty much in our final step of getting this done and we're, we're almost there, guys, so stick with me here. You need to go all the way over to your settings and then down to your network settings and then internet connection settings. All right, we'll just go ahead and press OK on this. Now we want to go ahead and press uh, custom here. And whether you're using a wired or a wireless connection, it doesn't matter. I'm using a wired connection today, so we'll go ahead and pick wired. Go ahead and select these to auto detect. And then for your IP address setting, we'll go ahead and do manual. Now it's going to show you your PlayStation's IP address here. In my case, it's 192.168.2.252. Yours could be completely different. And this is where you need to set it up. You need to know if your router, your router is always going to start with 192.168. something. something. Most of you are probably going to be dot zero dot something dot one dot something or dot two dot something. So you need to figure that out. So mine is one ninety two to one sixty eight dot two dot two five two. Now for your last number here, once you've established what this number should be, you want to go ahead and set that at something probably higher than two hundred. That way it doesn't interfere with the DHCP pool on your router. That's basically the addresses that it assigns to devices that join the network. So I set mine at two five two. You can set yours at that too. Just anything. 254 or lower and probably above 200 so 
do that. And then next, we'll go ahead and leave that at 255, 255.255.0. .255 now, default router. This is where you need to know what your router's IP address is. Okay guys, sorry that this one isn't a screen capture for you, but anyway, to find your router's IP address, you just need to go ahead and bring up your command prompt. So go ahead and go down here and just type in CMD. That'll bring up your command prompt, and then you're gonna have your command prompt right there. And you just need to type in IP config, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, press enter. And if you scroll up here, it depends on how many uh, devices you have on here, but basically you're gonna see your computer's IP address, and then you're gonna see that subnet address that I just showed you guys. And you're gonna see default gateway. Do you see how that says, well, mine is 192.168.2.1 a win. That is your router's IP address. So default gateway is your router's IP, and also, you know, I said that second number there, how mine's a 2 and yours might be different. That's how you know what uh, number that one is, too. So whatever's there is what you're going to put on your PlayStation as well. So sorry I didn't put this in, and sorry that it's not a screen capture. All right, now for primary DNS, this is where you need to put in your computer's IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my computer now. I'm going to show you how to get your IP address, and then that's the address that you'll put in right here. Finding your computer's IP address is really easy. All you do is just go to Start. And then right here in the search box, if you're on Windows Vista or 7, if you're on Windows XP or lower, you need to go to run, but it's all the same after that. So once you're in your box here, type in CMD, and just go ahead and press enter. And it's gonna bring up, bring up a command prompt. Once your command prompt is up, just go ahead and type in I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, and then press enter. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up until you see an IP address that resembles this. It's gonna be like 192.168, dot two dot something or sometimes for you if you're on a different router than me it could be 192.168.1 dot something or even dot zero dot something but whatever that is you need to take note of that okay now that you know how to do that you'll be able to put it in right here my computer's ip address is 192.168.2.24 and now your secondary dns this is in case you want to be able to get online on your playstation not the psn but just be able to use like the internet browser and you don't have your computer all set up and ready to go just pick your secondary dns server which for, in my case, it's gonna be the same as your router and probably in your guys' case too. So that's gonna be 192.168.2.101. That's for me, it could be completely different for you guys. So once you have all those settings filled in, just go ahead and push the right arrow and it'll take you to the next setting here. Go ahead and choose that as automatic. We're not gonna use a proxy server, so do not use. Uh, enable or disable you, UPnP, it doesn't matter. It depends on if your router supports it. So I just pick disable and we'll go ahead and press X to save the settings. Um, I'll go ahead and test the connection, but it's going to fail because we don't have everything completely set up yet. Okay, it's telling me that a software update is required, so we'll go ahead and press circle here. So now we're going to go ahead and head over to the computer and we're going to start up the program that's going to trick the PlayStation into thinking that it's on the latest firmware version. Okay, I'm really sorry, but I forgot to put this part in the screen capture, so I'm just going to film my screen because that takes way too long to render again. So basically, once you're over your computer, you're going to see your PSN 355 folder that we already extracted here. Go ahead and double click on it and you're going to see a file there called fuckpsnv0.4.exe. Go ahead and open that up. And then you should just see a little command prompt window and it's going to say target address here. And if you get that message, just go ahead and allow it access. Okay, and then it's going to say target um, address there, and then it's going to say all the ports and IP that it's listening on. So once you've got that, you know that you're good, and we can head back over to the PlayStation, and we're actually going to be able to log into the PSN. All right, now that that program's running on the computer, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that we'll be able to log into the PSN now. So go ahead and go over to sign in. It's going to say sign in, please wait. And cross your fingers, if all went well, it'll say welcome and you're going to be signed in and you're going to be on 3.55 and have PSN access. So that is really good. Yeah, there it is. So now we see account management and I can go over and here's my friends list. Uh, there's my PSN if you guys ever want to add me. I don't know if you can see it, but it's Chris Tech TV. Go figure, huh? So, <laughs> so there it is. So we are online and just to show you guys that I'm not bullcrapping you, I'm sure that you can believe me, but we'll go ahead and look at the system settings and I'll show you that I'm on 3.55 again where are we at here all the way down to system information and I will zoom way in on this one so I know you guys see it there it is version 3.55 and we are logged in to the PSN so there it is so that is all there is to it congratulations if everything worked you guys should be able to log in a PSN no problems even though you're on 3.55 custom firmware the way I see it, this shouldn't stop working, but you know, Sony, there could be a way that they could patch it. I don't really know. If they do, um, like always, we'll just have to wait till something bigger and better comes out, and that's usually never a problem with our awesome development community that we have. I know that you guys will have questions. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Send me a PM. Check out my website, ChrisTechTV.com. Go to the forums. 
And just one other thing I want to talk to you about before I let you go here is Facebook. Um, I do have a Facebook fan page. You can find it just below the video here. Go ahead and sign up on there. I don't really think that this would ever happen, but if something would happen where like my YouTube channel gets shut down by Sony or someone else because of the PS3 hacking stuff, you guys can check out my Facebook fan page and you'll always be able to get a hold of me there. So if I make a new YouTube, I can just let everybody know there on my Facebook page and then you're good to go. So just make sure you go like that Facebook fan page. It's just down below. Click on it. It takes two seconds. And that way you guys can always stay on top of the most current information. That is all I have for you guys today and I will see you in the next video.